Whatever you do, don't look at verse 10. You won't like what you see there. And I absolutely forbid you to read verse 11. Do not harden your hearts, God says, the great God and the great king above all gods. If we had no tendency to harden our hearts, he wouldn't warn us not to do so. That's why we tell kids not to eat the yellow snow. They love lemon-flavored snow cones, so naturally... They have a tendency to eat yellow snow, so we remind them, don't eat the yellow snow. We have a tendency to harden our hearts, so we are reminded, don't harden your hearts. I had to visit family, and they just happened to live in Germany. And look, it's always great going over there, but it becomes the same as any family visit. Enough is enough, and it's time to go home but one does not travel to Germany for three days and two nights. Our family is familiar enough with each other that we all know that we get on each other's nerves after a couple of days. So my uncle, in appreciation for my coming over to do some necessary family business with him, handed me the keys to his car and said, drive. So I tucked my wife into the passenger side and we took off toward Austria. The Alps send out advanced scouts, and you encounter them in the middle of nowhere, and they absolutely knock your socks off with delight. Rugged, rigid, tall, dark, foreboding. And these are just the advanced scouts. It seems after every curve in the road, which is going straight up, another rank of mountain strikes you with visual wonder, with awe and with a little fear, and then it hits you. This is the country that invented modern atheism, the denial that there is a God right here in the heart of this landscape. These evil men taught us that feeling in your soul when you look down from the heights upon Untur Amargau or whatever is not appreciation for what God has wrought. No. It's dizziness, a natural phenomenon. Besides which, that's not a soul. That's an evolutionary what-have-you to make you moral and ethical so that food-producing civilization can survive. Get it? Whatever. Big sky country out west is the same way, inviting you to worship and bow down before the Lord our Maker, the great God, the great King above all gods. If you do not hear his voice in his creation, then perhaps you hear it in this. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. He made himself our shepherd when he brought us up out of the land of slavery, defeating every evil with great signs and wonders, bringing pitch darkness over all the land, healing the lame, giving sight to the blind, raising the dead, and forgiving sins, sending a great wind to divide the deep places of the earth so that we enter into his pasture in peace, without fear. Why would we have a tendency to harden our hearts? Well, I don't know, probably something to do with original sin, temptation, weakness, and a handful of other maladies which persist in us from the moment we are conceived. It's infuriating both to us and to God. Don't harden your hearts. You've heard my voice and seen my work. Have you seen my work? Hey, go ahead and believe that I didn't make the mountains and the plains and the seas and that I didn't fill them up with plants and animals and that I don't move the peoples of the earth where I desire. Go ahead and believe that all that is a fanciful myth. But the forgiveness of sins. My son died for you to forgive you 
your sins. My son did that. Get it? The son of God. Don't harden your hearts against the forgiveness of sins. Why would you do that? Have you seen his work? He raises you from the dead. Why would you harden your hearts against everlasting life? 